It just has to be one of the most alive places on Earth. Hundreds of species of mammals, including rare monkeys and jaguars, extraordinary birds, thousands of species of plants and trees and insects. The Yasuni National Park encompasses almost 10,000 square kilometers of the rainforest in the east of Ecuador. For scientists and lovers of nature, it is its biodiversity which is so outstanding, the sheer variety of life on Earth that can be seen at the park. The problem for Yasuni that underneath its crust lies another treasure, that of oil, hundreds of millions of barrels of it. To try to protect the forest, back in 2007, the country's former president, Rafael Correa, offered the world a chance to save it. He pledged to leave the oil alone in a deal called the Yasuni ITT initiative, if the rest of the world provided compensation of $3.6 billion, perhaps half of what the oil was then worth. But six years later, only a fraction of that had been pledged, and the president gave up. Profunda tristeza pero también con absoluta responsabilidad con nuestro pueblo y con la historia, he tenido que tomar una de las decisiones más difíciles de todo mi gobierno. El día de hoy he firmado el decreto ejecutivo para la liquidación de los fideicomisos Yasuní y TT y con ello poner fin a la iniciativa. Well, since then, drilling has begun, and the rainforest shrinks, another small slice swallowed up every day. The authorities say only a small slice will be lost, and they point to Ecuador's need for finance, for its health system, social housing and education. In the forest itself, ecologists, indigenous people and the creatures themselves, for whom Yasuni is their home, fight for its survival. Antoine Badia revisits Yasuni for France 24. Classified by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1989, the Yasuni National Park in the east of Ecuador is one of the world's most unique ecosystems. Thousands of different animals and plants crowd this corner of the Amazon. Certain species exist here alone, with new ones still likely to be discovered. A research station in the heart of Yasuni's jungle welcomes scientists from all over the globe in order to study the park's exceptional biodiversity. The director, Diego Mosquera, is from Colombia. Wow, the sun's strong today. A feline specialist, Diego has led research projects in Yasuni for 12 years. Ahora vamos a ver unas cámaras que dejé por allá. We're going to see the hidden cameras in a place where I found a dead animal. It was a sloth. I left it where it was and put up cameras around it to see what animals came to eat the body. Here we are. There's a camera here, one there, and the last one over there. There are 29 recordings on this one. I'm looking forward to seeing what ate the sloth. There's almost nothing left. You can have the best intentions in the world. That's not going to save nature. What you need is hard scientific facts. That works. If I tell you, please, Yasuni is so beautiful, please don't exploit it, let it be, that won't work. Diego believes as much in his mission to present the public with the right information as he does in his vocation as a scientist. He knows that Yusuni still has much to reveal. I know this jungle well, but it's so varied that every day you walk for two minutes and find something you've never seen before. Even if we really know a lot about Yasuni and the jungle, at the same time, we really know next to nothing. There's a multitude of things that we still haven't discovered here or understood. But time may be running out for the scientists. After failing to find the international support for a conservation initiative led by President Korea, Yasuni and its hidden treasures are now in danger. The land covers close to half the crude oil reserves of Ecuador. 
Highly controversial drilling began last September in a 6,500 square mile reserve known as Block 43. Oil is the engine of Ecuador's economy and the country's third largest export. Its presence is everywhere, written in pipelines, storage tanks, and torch lamps. Like in Lagra Agrio, where oil was first discovered in the 1960s. You're back from vacation? Yes, how are you? Good, we've come to see the Black Gold Hotel. A former oil company employee, Donald Macayo helped develop Lagra Agrio, which counts a population of 50,000 people today. That's the first hotel ever built in Lago Agrio, the Black Gold Hotel. In the beginning it was wood, reeds, planks, the roof was straw. That's where the first drillers and the first employees came to live. Excuse me, can we go on the terrace for a couple of minutes? Is it yours? Yes, it's my house. It's just to see the oil tanks on the other side. Here are the reservoirs. Those are called tankers. All the oils stored there. You can see there the pipelines, the Petro Ecuador logo. Over there, where there's all that noise, is the pumping station. Lago Agrio was built by and for oil alone. Today, that fact saddens Don Macayo. The devastation that the oil production caused has made this former oil employee an ardent defender of the Amazon rainforest. Esta es una pintura. This fresco represents the indigenous peoples. Up high is the UDAPT logo, the Union for Victims of Texaco. Here are the names of the Aikofan, the Siona, the Shuar, the Quichua, the Siekopai, the Huarorani, and the Mestizo. This painting represents their struggle, their protests. And here is Chevron, the company that completely destroyed the Amazon through ambition, through its love of money and power. Chevron Texaco, the first oil company to set up shop here in the 1960s, is the militant ecologist's enemy number one. Donald Moncayo and his association have been leading a court case against the U.S. company for more than 20 years, accusing it of having destroyed the environment. It's up to us, Ecuadorians, to pay to have the soil cleaned. And during this time, the company continues to make money from the land. They should be the ones who pay for the cleanup, because they're the ones responsible for the mess. And the people who live here are also paying a heavy price. Alfredo is a member of the indigenous community of Sequoias from San Pablo a small village close to an old Chevron Texaco site. We use this water because we can't find clean water in the rivers, because of the chemicals and the oil. We cannot use the river's waters anymore. Alfredo and his family use rainwater to cook and for daily chores. The oil and its toxic chemicals have polluted the river that runs by the village, with drastic consequences for the whole community. Alfredo's uncle and his family 
have been the worst affected. Mm. Because of the oil that's polluting the river, I'm constantly sick. People swim there, they get sick. My daughter died in 2009 from cancer of the uterus. We couldn't care for her, we didn't have enough money. Some dozen people from San Pablo have died of cancers that may be linked to the contaminated water. When the pollution was at its worst, slicks of crude oil used to float across the river top. The slicks are no longer there, but the water is still dirty. Before, the river was like a giant market. If you went off fishing, you always came back with fish for the whole family. But after the oil leak, almost all of the fish died. Devastated landscapes, populations sickened by pollution. The first wave of Ecuador's oil drilling has ravaged the northeast of the country. The government is promising to be more careful next time and to ensure the environment is protected. But the people of Yasuni don't trust them. Cesar Rodas Pastrana has lived his whole life in Nuevo Rocafuerte, a small village at the heart of Block 43, where oil drilling has just been authorized in Yasuni. We're the children of this land, born and raised here. We've seen animals disappear, and tourism is disappearing too. Tourists aren't coming anymore. Before, it was a drilling site. Huge numbers of tourists used to come here. Today, no, they barely come. Here's Puerto Miranda. A village of just 80 people, it is also the owner of numerous ancestral lands full of oil. Is Mr. Machoa there? The professor, please, we'd like to talk to him. And the village leader? The indigenous community has leased a part of its land to Ecuadorian oil company Petro Amazonas, which oversees drilling in the region. But the people of the village feel they have been cheated. They're engineers, they're educated. Most of the villagers here haven't gone past elementary school or junior high. We can't really negotiate. They come here, they propose something, offer us things, but they never keep their word. They say there'll be no leaks, nothing will be contaminated. They guarantee us that we'll be compensated, that we'll be well paid. They promise work. In reality, though, that's not true. The community received $135,000 for a 20-year lease on their land. The oil company gives money to the community, but that doesn't compensate for the contamination. What am I going to do if they give me a million dollars, then raise the whole forest? What's that worth? I prefer to keep the forest and forget the money. Despite the villagers' complaints, Oil drilling in Yasuni is full steam ahead. A few minutes by boat from Nuevo Racofuerte, the largest drilling site is a sensitive area with limited access. While Petro Amazonas is responsible for construction, Chinese companies have exploitation rights. Ecuador is paying off its Chinese debts through the oil of Block 43. <laughs> This boat transports trucks full of equipment and product for an oil company in Puerto Miranda. The oil business is already leaving its mark in Yasuni, along the Tiputini River. That's the rig they're building now. A minimum of four hectares of the forest is raised for every rig. 
The connecting roads are destroying the countryside beyond recognition. You don't see the animals here that you used to see because of the noise from the machines and all the rest of it. It's like a desert now. You don't see a bird, you don't see anything. They're all gone. The local people have stayed, but far from benefiting from the oil like the rest of the country, the indigenous communities are losing their traditional ways of life and are disappearing little by little. Yasuni National Park and its incredible biodiversity is breathing still, but for how long? Antoine Badiat revisiting Yasuni for France 24. Well, that's uh, all from this week's edition. Don't forget, of course, you can catch it again and all the previous editions as well on our website at france24.com. Thanks for watching. More news coming up in just a few moments' time. Stay with us.